location. My name is Sean. I am here at the Underground Arts Building. We have just got done watching part of the Grimposium as part as the as part of the Choosing Death takeover here on Sirius XM Liquid Metal, and I am here with none other than well-known, familiar guy. I could have swore I've heard this voice before, Ian Christie, Bazillion Howdy. Points Publisher. Howdy, stranger. How's it going? It is a pleasure to have some family here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This is my first time walking around, getting to know the sights, the streets, the smells that I run into. A lot of smells. Yes, yes. I good smells. And everybody's smells. so nice. It's such the opposite of New York City. I can't believe how nice Philly always is. And how is it to be here uh, as part of a panel on the Grimposium, you Albert Mudrian of the editor in chief of Decibel Magazine. What was it like for you being up? You know, just personally and selfishly being into this metal stuff for you know a couple of years now. But doing like doing Bloody Roots, doing a weekly metal history show, it's it's been a long it's it's been like a voice in the wilderness, I guess. And little by little, I meet more and more people that have listened to the show over the years. But to have like universities starting to teach classes on metal to have what uh, what these guys with Vivek and the Grimposium have done bringing together ex people with a lot of experience just to talk about singing and talk about design talk about uh, painting you know Dan Seagrave painting the classic yeah. uh, entombed and morbid angel album covers it's something it's not the kind of thing you're always yelling about to some friend at, at a show you know by uh, uh, between bands it's yeah. it's uh, all of a sudden like there is a bar here at the Grimposium, exactly, but uh, which is really cool. It, it's a totally good, it's the it's the totally right venue for this. Uh, a dark underground cavern, but um, it's also amazing. Amazing. I'm just trying to say it's amazing to see this kind of respect given and this kind of real, real attention and thought put oh. right put into something that everybody has to usually figure out on their own. Yeah, there was a death metal vocal workshop, which was cool. Layla, what was that girl's name? Leia. Uh, uh, from Vastum. Yes, yeah. She was awesome. She was giving death metal vocals on stage. We had Ian Christie up doing a panel. He is the author of Sound of the Sound of the Beast, the complete history, complete headbanging history of heavy metal. I got it. I got it. <laughs> it is an awesome book. One of my favorite reads, and one of the my favorite parts about it is the nod to hip hop. That is something that I have come up with my entire life. I have been a heavy metal headbanger and a hip hop head, and it was very awesome of me to see that you acknowledged Onyx and bands like House of Pain and bands like just the hardcore hip hop. That was cool to well, see in. You know, I'll heavy say metal. to me there there was a lot of crossover especially around the time of the late 1980s when Public Enemy and NWA came out and were kind of doing like for hip hop what what metal had been doing for uh, suburban kids and I wouldn't have included any of that stuff in the book except talking to those guys like Chuck D from Public Enemy he said yeah you know we when I was a kid growing up on Long Island like you know he's not from the Bronx or something he's already from like a heavy metal hotbed they would look at Iron Maiden album covers and just get lost the same way everybody does That's very cool. it, you know eddie and the little figures that uh painter Derek riggs would put into the margins and that's what public enemy tried to do on their album covers he said that's where that came from the story of an album cover that's bad so there was a, there was a it, it, none of this stuff exists in a vacuum make sure you pick up sound of the beast ian what band on the choosing death fest would you like to go into right now on sirius xm liquid metal well i guess we're going to play deceased because you can never play enough to cease. This is a band that's existed since the mid 1980s and always super productive, incredibly skilled, amazing, real old school power, but always delivered in a in a modern. Uh, it's relevant. It always it always hits me in the guts. Excellent, excellent melodies coming out of this band, despite being like super hairy knuckled uh, <laughs> toe jam toe jam jammers. Choosing death special on certain.